one of the first dilemmas you have to think about when making a 3D version of an old tile-based 2D game is how to handle the collision. For example, the very first obstacle in the first level of Bionic Mando is a barrel just in front of you. And you can't walk past this barrel, but if you use your arm, you can just swing right through it, actually. And doing this kind of things in a realistic 3D physics engine is quite messy because the player would just collide with it and he would bounce off and everything would be quite random. We ended up using basically the same kind of technology they used in the good old days. The swing mechanic is almost 100% based on the original, so it's totally physically incorrect. You always swing with the same, uh, same angle and when you jump off a swing, you always get the same speed no matter what length your rope is or when in you release in the swing, you always get the slightly upwards jump. Everybody gets really excited when you talk about weapons or working on weapons for a game. It's been a lot of fun with these weapons because, uh, again, Jakob, our concept artist and art director, designed a uh, really unique uh, weaponry. But again, they are very low poly, so we had to keep it simple and make sure the silhouettes actually became the most important part of the game so that each one looked uniquely different to the player uh, while still being cool. We try to bring something uh, fun for the players, so that's for sure. The weapons in the original game, they weren't that well balanced. On area five, which is probably like the third area that you, come, that you clear, you get the uh, rocket launcher and then you use that for the rest of the game except for the areas where you have to use another weapon. Uh, you can only, in the original, you can only bring one weapon into an area, and then you're stuck with that weapon. So we wanted to balance that out, make all the weapons useful in some way, always, and al also encourage the player to use more, you know, different weapons. So you, you bring all the weapons at all times. You have all the weapons with you, you can switch weapons at any time. Uh, different weapons are effective against different enemies. Some weapons are, you know, not effective at all, and then you need to switch to another type of weapon to take that enemy out. So there's a tactical aspect of the game that we've added that wasn't in the original game. One thing with the original that was uh, interesting was the dialogue with the bosses. Uh, when you enter a boss room, you see this uh, small communication between the boss and Spencer. Um, Although he never replies, it's the boss says something. Uh, yeah, it's a monologue where the boss says something humiliating. Uh, that's something that we felt being really uh, had a lot of potential that we wanted to develop into a more uh, element that could, you know, bring some more attitude and kind of highlight who Spencer is. And then our uh, producer from within Capcom, Ben Judd, came with the idea that uh, we could have some artists from within Capcom do the uh, comic panels. They actually managed to get Toshiaki Mori, which is this really talented uh, artist. Yeah, illustrator artist. Quite well incredible. known. Yeah, uh, I did the sketches for the the comic panels, uh, posing the characters in as dramatic poses, really trying to get some sort of manic expressions. Yeah, really uh, over the edge kind of uh, expressions. And uh, Morrison did the the renders, the f fully rendered illustrations, which are shown in game and are incredible. In addition to the fact that you can play the single-player campaign by yourself, you can also play it with a, together with a friend. There's no uh, friendly fire, there's just kind of party playing crazy, busting through the levels, shooting the enemies. The behavior of the boss has also changed so that you are required to cooperate and really work together to exploit the boss's weak spot to beat it. So we had two people playing cooperative. Why not add two more and give the players the ability to play four people against each other, swinging around in a, an enclosed arena, battling it out in deathmatch with their bionic arms and weapons. And it makes a great party game. It's a typical Bionic Commander moment when you fall down towards a pit and you throw your arm out in the last split second and catch yourself. You feel like an action hero in a movie. And we built a multiplayer mode on top of, you know, that entire aspect of the game. Don't touch the floor, is what it's called. The only thing that kills people is the bottom. You won't kill your opponents with your weapon, but you can push them around and try to make them fall over the edges of the platform. Our love for the original game is something that, uh, that we really, I mean, we really adore the original and to be able to work on the, on the remake for this great game is really good. I yeah. mean, it's really, it feels like a great, a great honor. Yeah, we had a blast making the game, yeah. and I think that really shows in Bionic Commander Rearmed. Mm. And what I feel 
is the most fun is that we get the chance to reintroduce the game to mankind. <laughs> no, to, to the people that didn't play the original game and maybe, you know, wasn't even born when the original came out. So. That feels good. That feels good. <laughs>